Hello everyone, my name is Ankit Verma and today we are learning imbalanced class. It is also called imbalanced data or imbalanced data set. First of all, we are learning balanced class. Balanced class contain approximately equal ratio of data points in each class. Here in the diagram, we can see that we have class 1 which contain squares and we have class 2 which contain circles. Here we can see that the number of squares are approximately equal to number of circles. So this is called balanced class data or data set. Next we are learning is imbalanced class. Imbalanced class contain unequal ratio of data points in each class. Here in the diagram we have class 1 which contain squares and we have class 2 which contain circles. Here number of squares are much more than number of circles. Their ratio is unequal. They are not balanced. So this is called imbalanced class data or data set. Now we are learning the problems with imbalanced class. The first problem is the standard machine learning techniques like decision tree Logistic regression are biased towards majority class. Here in the diagram we can see that the class 1 points are more in number. So they are in majority. The machine learning algorithms like decision tree and logistic regression, they are more biased means they more focus on the majority class. When they are giving the prediction, their results are more focused towards majority. Here the class 2 members are very less, means they are in minority. Machine learning algorithms tend to ignore this minority class. Next problem is less accuracy. Machine learning algorithms work good if the classes are balanced. But if the classes are imbalanced, then they are more focusing on the majority and they are trying to ignoring the minority. And because of that, accuracy is not coming. So they are less accurate. Next problem is poor generalization. The machine learning algorithms are more focused towards the majority class and they are not considering the minority class and because of that the conclusion they are giving that is not proper. So they are not generalizing properly. So these are the problems with imbalanced class, data or data set. Now we are taking few examples where we have imbalanced class. The first example is fraud detection. In the fraud detection, we are having imbalanced data. Here we have little number of frauds and maximum transactions are accurate. Because of this, the model is not properly trained and model give inaccurate results. Here the model will not be able to detect the fraud transactions. Next example is Anomaly detection. This is also having imbalanced class. Here we have limited number of anomaly means suspicious activity and maximum number of normal activity. Here the model is not properly trained and it will give the inaccurate results. The model will not able to detect the anomaly. So here in the examples we can see that because the fraud and anomaly we are having very less examples 
that's why models are not properly trained so these are the problem with imbalance class now we are learning techniques to handle class imbalance problem the first technique is resampling resampling modify sample distribution in the diagram we can see that we have original data set here the data is imbalanced we have minority class with very less data and we have majority class with more data in resampling we modify these data resampling is used to balance class distribution here the data is unbalanced some data is in minority and some data is in majority so this can be balanced using resampling there are two methods under resampling the first one is oversampling it is also called upsampling oversampling add more samples from minority class here in the diagram we can see that we have original data set where we have less data which is in minority and more data which is in majority this is imbalanced data in the minority class more number of samples are added and it is increased so that the class 1 and class 2 can be balanced so here we are increasing the samples in minority this is called oversampling oversampling replicate random records here the records from minority class are randomly taken and they are replicated so that it can be balanced with another class now we are learning advantages of oversampling first is no information loss here we are adding the records and in addition information is not lost second is enhanced model performance when the classes are balanced model perform good and they give accurate results next is more robust model model is now able to deal with unbalanced data so it is more robust now we are learning disadvantages of oversampling first is it may cause overfitting overfitting means we are keep on adding multiple features in a model and because of that the efficiency of model decrease here also we are adding more and more data so it may become overfitting next is increased complexity here we are adding more data and because of that more computation power is required so this is more complex next is algorithm sensitivity here we are duplicating some data in that case the model become more sensitive for the repetition of data so this is all about oversampling the second method under resampling is undersampling it is also called downsampling under sampling remove samples from majority class in the diagram we have original data set where we have less data in minority and more data in majority from this majority data few samples are removed so that it can be reduced and become equivalent to the other class this is called undersampling undersampling eliminate random records from this majority data randomly few records are removed and this becomes less and equivalent to the another class now we are discussing advantages of undersampling 
The first is it reduces complexity. In undersampling, some data from majority class is removed. So the less data is there and because of that less calculation and which leads to less complexity. Next is simple model. As the data is removed and complexity is reduced, that's why model is very simple. Now we are learning disadvantages of undersampling. The first is information loss may occur. As we are removing data from majority class, that's why some information can be lost. Second is risk of bias. Here the data from original data set is removed. That's why model can be biased. Next is potential for instability. Here we are changing the original data. So model can be instable. So that is all about undersampling. Next technique to handle class imbalance problem is evaluation matrix. Here we have to use right evaluation matrix, just like confusion matrix. Here in the table, we have confusion matrix. With the help of confusion matrix, we can check performance of algorithm. One side, we have predicted values and they are in positive and negative. Other side, we have actual values and they are also in positive and negative. Based on that, we can calculate true positive, false negative, false positive and true negative. Using the confusion matrix, we can calculate accuracy, precision and recall. And based on all these, we can give the right prediction. So by choosing the right evaluation matrix, like confusion matrix, we can handle class imbalance problem. Next technique to handle class imbalance problem is ensemble learning. In ensemble learning, the data set is divided. Then it is given to different models. And afterward, results are combined. Here in the diagram, we can see that we have input training data and this is divided and given to different different models. Every model is giving their predictions. These all predictions are combined. And out of that, new prediction is created. This is the ensemble learning. So by this method, we can give accurate prediction. In the ensemble learning, we have different approaches like bagging, boosting and stacking. So using the ensemble learning, we can give the clear prediction and because of that, we can handle class imbalance problem. Next technique to handle class imbalance problem is feature selection. In feature selection, we calculate one-sided matrix, just like correlation coefficient and odds ratios. We also calculate two-sided matrix, just like information gain and chi-square. Now from all these matrix, the scores are taken. Now based on the scores, some significant features from each class are identified and these all features are combined to create a set of features. So this is called feature selection. Here different matrices are taken, their scores are taken and specific features are combined. And because of these features, we can give the correct prediction. So using the feature selection, the class imbalance problem can be handled. So that's all for today. Thank you.